All right, so Kath, you're going to scoot across there and we're going to start cooking. Kath, yeah, across here, let me show you the kitchen. I mean, this is a very scary kind of subject for, I think, a lot of parents. You know, this is a chapter that I've closed in my life. My kids, you know, they went through the whole introducing solid space. But it is very scary because you don't know what to feed at what stage. It is a confusing kind of area as well. There's a risk of, you know, is my baby going to choke? Can he eat that? I don't know. I mean, my wife even picked up when we gave a first taste of watermelon, you know, which I think that's okay. But... We are, you've got some great recipes in the in the book, Weaning Sense, and we are giving two copies away as well. I'll give you the details in just a bit. But you've got a great a recipe for an, an easy peasy bread yes. that you're going to be showing us this morning. Okay, well, this is an amazing recipe because it's so simple. So even if you're not a cook, I challenge you to try it because okay. it works every time. Um, and I also, I think it's lovely to actually show this on show because there's been so much hype out there is bread bad or carbs bad yes. and can my children have carbs and are they allowed and we don't advocate box cereals but we do say good healthy carbs good grains yeah. are really important which is what we have here exactly. so let's let's put together this bread and i can only imagine how nice it would be if you just there, there, there you go my boy or girl there's a piece of bread for you you'll know it's safe it's amazing <laughs> Absolutely. i can see graham is loving this this morning he's got a whole <laughs> list of things he's going to go through let's put this together okay so obviously when you start you're just going to get a, a tin the bread tin, and okay. line it with some batter or if you've got some baking paper, you can use that. All right. Stone ground flour. Flour is not a swear word, but you do <laughs> want you do want good old fashioned stone ground flour. Okay. And what that is is it means that it's less processed, so it's still got the wheat germ. In other words, yes. it will go off. Okay. Which means this bread will only last about two days. It will okay. grow mold if you want to do an experiment. Yeah. Still, it's not going <laughs> to not last there in a day. But I mean, you can tuck in with your baby, which is amazing. Absolutely. You're going right, to add a salt. little bit of salt to it. You're going to add some instant yeast. All right. And then you're going to mix it together so that your yeast goes right through. Okay. Then you're going to add your sugar. And for those of you that yeah, are scared little. of sugar, it's very, very, very little. Don't be scared. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Totally fine. It's better than all the sweeties and stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I'd rather get that in there. And then uh, this is just room temperature water. Okay. Just let your sugar dissolve. And the right. sugar is obviously going to activate the yeast, which That's is it. why it is really important. Important to get in there, yeah. And you're going to mix it into there. And really okay. just, and you're, if you've got older kids, and they can love to do this. Yeah, it works yeah, yeah. so nicely. Okay, awesome. Mix it all together. Till you get obviously a bread dough. Till you get a bread dough, it comes across from, to, away from the side. It's a bit sticky. And then you yeah. know, once it comes away from the side, you, Is that it? you don't it need to there. leave this before like a normal then day. You to, will, to then you'll leave it for about 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to pop it in your oven, which okay. you've preheated. Yeah. And... And then, you, and then you left with a beautiful loaf like left that. With it. And I see you just serve it Delicious with you can, you can a little bit of butter or even dry like that. Absolutely. Or? And you can toast it. Um, you really have these... It's, it aids in finger foods because go, that's yeah. a wonderful... Once again, the sensory Exactly. Part, yeah. okay. And um, you can also add, I was just telling Meg, I had a mashed banana the other day that I just added Put into it there. and it creates another whole oh, different right. flavor well, and texture. Well, I think that is great. Now, SMS the keyword bread to 33728 if you want to get your hands on the recipe to this very easy peasy bread. Um, perfect for the youngsters. That's bread to 33728. Uh, but like I've said, we are giving away two copies of a Weaning Sense this morning. If you want to get your hands on a copy and stand a chance to win, what you need to do is SMS the keyword dinner to 33728. That's dinner to 33728. And you could be the lucky one, especially if you're a new mom or dad, like Graham, who can do with <laughs> a book like that in their lives. So we'll be back with another cooking segment in just a bit right now. Let's continue this very awesome chat. Graham, back to you. It's my feel good Thank you so much. You must know how Ewan was celebrating when he found out the news. I think he was as happy as I was that I was having a child so he could share these baby segments with someone else. Um, it really is so interesting to me to look at how different parents are approaching things and I begin to understand how you guys have approached this purely because of that. There are so many different messages out there. But, I mean, children are children. We've been bringing up children for centuries now. You know, there is a certain amount of um, intuition involved with that. So you've got to trust your gut. But I think most people are just wanting to know, when do we start? What, what, what is the ideal time to start? start in your experience from what you've discovered? Well, it, that is the controversy. So for many years, we introduced solids actually quite early. I mean, 100 years ago, they were introducing solids as early as two weeks, three, three months. Wow. And then all the theory changed. And certainly in the last 10 years, the focus has been on introducing at six months of age. And most parents have tried to hang out till then. But how, how often moms say to me, my baby's ready at four months. I know they're ready. Why do I have to wait to six months? 
The reality is that the science is now showing us that actually introduction between 17 weeks, so that's four months of age, and six months of age, anywhere in that window is not only safe, but appropriate for little ones. If you wait too late, they become hesitant to engage with new foods, they might become more fussy, and if you introduce earlier than that, it's not good for their health. So that's the window period that we now talk about. And I think we forget, a lot of the time they're not ingesting a lot of that food, it's just about getting the brain to wake up to the fact that they can actually yeah. use their mouth in that way. What do I start with? What foods are ideal to start with? Do we follow our own taste palette? What are babies enjoying these days? <laughs> um, well, you want to start with, I always say go back to nature. So what would you kind of, if you were living on a farm and living off the land, what would you have access to? And it would be seasonal fruits and vegetables so that's the first thing so if avos are in season when you're about to wean your little one then avos are good weaning food if they're not then it's not the best start to weaning food so that's the first thing the second thing is don't be scared of allergy foods those are your proteins don't be scared of eggs early introduction of eggs can even be one of the starter foods um, don't be scared of chicken fish um, nuts nut butters make a wonderful rich starter food that you can mix in to a fruit, for example, and that makes a lovely start to breakfast. And then your grains are excellent, but your fresh, natural grains, like your oats, your spelt, your millet. And I really encourage rotating grains. So don't get stuck on one grain, try the grains. There are actually over 500 grain types out there. At least get your child onto about five or six of them. I get a sense that you guys have learned so much through this process. <laughs> Maybe you wish you could go back um, with this incredible knowledge. Is there something that we should avoid or foods that we should avoid specifically very quickly? Um, I would say anything that's got a label with lots of ingredients, avoid <sighs> it altogether. The more ingredients on a label you want to avoid. So try and get as simple as possible and as unprocessed as possible and out the box. Oh, I love that, man. And trust your gut. Trust yeah, your gut. Trust, trust their little gut and trust your <laughs> gut as well. Absolutely awesome having Kath and Meg here, the authors of Weaning Sense. Go and get yourself a copy. Absolute magic.